Thank you everybody for joining us today on our Job Nimbus 101 workshop. Today we are going to be workshopping custom reports, giving you a good foundation on how to build those custom reports in your account. I'm Daniel. I'm Logan. We're excited to have you all here today. In Job Nimbus, if you're using it right, you're keeping a ton of important data for yourself. That data will be things like who your customers are, what their address is, what their email address is, what estimates you've made for them, where you hid the bodies, <laughs> and other important things like that. Now, it's good to have that information, and it's very good to be organized. But we can take it a step further and make that information work for you. You can use that information to figure things out, forecast the future, see what happened in the past. Some of that is like on this sales pipeline report up here generated by Job Nimbus, but some of it you can generate yourself to get the information that matters most to you. Those are custom reports, and that's what we're going to go over today. Exactly, and it's super easy to get to your custom reports. All you have to do is click on reports here in the main menu. This will bring up all of the reports you have in your Job Nimbus account. As you see, it is separated by two different types of reports. Here we have our built-in reports. As Logan was saying, these are generated by Job Nimbus. We can use these to uh, forecast or project financial information and data. We can use these to track our lead sources. We can even use these to keep an eye on what our team is doing in our Job Nimbus account. Over here, we have our saved reports. These are your custom reports where you can customize what data you really want to look at to see those trends to help bring your business to the next level. Once you save a report, it'll show up here under my saved reports in alphabetical order. To create a report, click on the three dots here and choose from any of these reports in the drop down menu. We can create a report that looks at our tasks, that looks at our jobs and contacts, you can create a report that views activity in our account, system activity or user activity in our account. We can even look at reports that view financial data from our financial documents. To get a good foundation on how these reports work, let's look at the report builder in a contact report. Here we are inside a contact report. You'll notice at the top, we've got controls to edit the standard fields that have appeared at the bottom. One of the important things that we'll need to do anytime we build a report is say what this report is for so we know how to edit it. In this case, I'd like to look at contacts that got stuck in the estimating or statuses right after estimating last year. So I'm going to call this something that I can remember. I'm going to call this 2020 stuck contact value. And I could add a longer description if I needed to. I feel like I know what this is. And I'm going to make this available to the admins. Now that I've done that, let's remove the information that we don't need. We don't need an address, a stage. In fact, we don't need a lot of this for the specific information that we want, which is what got stuck in what status and who's in charge. So that's what we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave the name, the status in the sales rep. But this isn't telling us how much value these are worth. So let's go in and add a column. Now these columns are all the information that's saved in Job Nimbus both our standard information and any custom fields that you added. For instance, building size might be something that you'd like to look at. There's also a few unique things. For example, we can choose to add a most recent estimate total to this report. So now we have the sort of information that we want, but we have 174 items, not all of which matter for what we're trying to do. Yeah, so let's narrow down on what we're looking at. And to do that, we can add a filter. To add a filter, click on Add Filter. And we can choose from any of these types of filters in this drop down menu. There are four types of filters in Job Nimbus, and we're going to add one of each of those types to our report. So, first, let's add a date filter for date status change. Since we want to look at statuses that have been stuck since last year, we can use a, we can type in the date anywhere in these text fields, or we can use this drop-down menu here to choose last year. 
and click apply. Next, let's add in an option filter for status since we wanna look at contacts in a specific status. Here we can type in a specific status in the text field, or we can choose from the drop down our statuses that we wanna look at. We wanna look at estimate, ready for approval, and job approved. After we apply that, let's add in another filter for a, a, a number filter for most recent estimate. We don't want to look at estimates that are that have a zero amount in them. So let's say greater than zero and apply. As you notice, as I've been adding these filters, records have been disappearing from this report, which is exactly what we want. We're really narrowing down on what we want to look at. Lastly, let's add a Boolean filter. We want to look at records that are currently active and not archived. So we added a filter for is archived. We're going to click false and apply. So now that we have a now that we have those four filters, we see that we took it down from 174 items to 11. Well, with just 11 items, that's more than our 10 records per page. So let's increase that to 25. And now let's see what information we can get out of these 11 contacts. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a calculation. I can do this on any column, but most will only allow me to do a count. A count just tells me how many items there are. So it's 11, and for any of these that I chose, the count would be 11. However, most recent estimate is a number field, so I've got a few more options. I can get the average of everything in the column, the max number, the smallest number, or what I'm gonna use here, the sum, which will give me the sum of all the numbers in that column. Now I can see that I have 11 contacts with a sum of about $63,000 in their estimates. That's a lot of money that we could have gotten last year. But yeah, but now that we have the data that we're looking at, we've added calculations, let's organize this information so it's easier to view. There are a couple of ways we can organize. So let's first grab this column header for most recent estimate and drag it over to uh, right after display name. Now we have a display name and most recent estimate and our calculations are right next to each other. Next, we want to group our data by sales rep. That way we can see exactly who we need to talk to and figure out what was going wrong last year. So let's drag sales rep up in between the title and the column headers, and that will group all of the records by our sales reps. We can even collapse or expand these to look at a, to make sure we're looking at the exact sales rep we need to look at. Lastly, let's sort our records by the most recent estimate. In, descent, in descending order. So we click on this column header twice, and there we have the highest number estimate all the way down to the lowest number estimate. Wow, Charles Schnell had a lot of records and where we could have gotten a lot of uh, money from those contacts. We should take this moment to, to coach Charles to help them uh, close the deal. I think that's a good idea. Unfortunately, uh, we are logged in as Charles. So Charles is us. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that we're finished with this, let's go ahead and save it. We can see it in a much more attractive view here. And up at the top, we can choose to edit it, duplicate it, bulk edit these records, or export to various spreadsheet files. These last three options will only be available if you have the option in your account settings. If you don't see them, talk to your admin. And that's about all we have with custom reports.